These, this approval is official. That happened on Friday. Israel's government said that it did approve this plan to attack Rafah. The plans, however, the timing is still unclear. It is unsure when they are going to go in. But there are about a million and a half people sheltering in Rafah. Israel has said that it is going to move them into what it's calling these humanitarian islands, these humanitarian enclaves, and it said it's going to do so with the help of partners. It's going to give people water as well as food, and it's going to give people shelter. But the plans are very vague, and it's unclear where people are supposed to go. Much of Gaza has been reduced to rubble. The humanitarian situation is catastrophic. Thousands of people are facing starvation. The United Nations said on Friday that malnutrition rates among children is unprecedented. At least 23 children have died in recent weeks from malnutrition as well as dehydration. And the United States has made it very clear that it is concerned about the risks of Israel entering into Rafah. Earlier this week, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that they had yet to receive a plan about what Israel is going to do with the civilians in Rafah. I have spoken to people in Gaza, in Rafah, as well as in the north. They have said that they don't have food. They wait for hours and hours just to get a little bit of water. They don't have shelter. I spoke to one man named Saeed in the north of Gaza. He said that his family members, they have all lost more than 10 kilograms just trying to find food. And he said that people are starving. Well, given everything you've just said, and the delegates from Egypt and Qatar certainly, and perhaps others will be joining for these ceasefire talks, restarting as early as Sunday, there's going to be a lot of resistance, uh, international resistance, one suspects, to this, uh, uh, this potential attack in uh, Rafa. There has been a lot of pushback on them going into Rafa, but there is right now this renewed push to have these negotiations come back. I mean, they were seen as all but dead until a few days ago, but Egyptian officials have said that talks could resume in Doha as soon as Sunday. This would be the first time that Israeli officials as well as Hamas leaders are coming together since the beginning of Ramadan to have these talks. Now, Hamas has put together a new proposal, and that proposal would have a ceasefire and end to the war, but it would keep them in control of Gaza. And what this would look like would happen over three phases. Each phase would be approximately six weeks long. What we know is that the first phase would see some Israeli soldiers come out of Gaza. Thousands of people would be allowed to go back to their homes in the north of Gaza. It would also see the increase of aid being allowed into Gaza. This first phase would also see the release of 35 hostages in Gaza. They would be women, elderly people, as well as sick people in exchange for 350 Palestinian prisoners. It would also include the release of five Israeli soldiers being held hostage in exchange for 50 Palestinian prisoners, some of who are serving long sentences. Phase two would see an entire ceasefire to the war and the return of all of the hostages. And then phase three would see the return of the hostages who have been killed, the return of their bodies in exchange for Israel lifting its blockade on Gaza and for the restructuring of Gaza. Now, Israel's president, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, has called these talks unfeasible, and he said that they don't make sense. However, he has still sent this delegation to Doha to continue in the discussions. I've spoken to some hostage negotiators who said that this could be a positive step, that Hamas seems a little bit more flexible this time than it has been in recent weeks, and the fact that Israel has sent a delegation to Qatar is something positive that people are being cautiously optimistic of right now.